I took off from Newark once, Newark Airport, in a, in a DC-10. And these were the days before everyone was so scared. Planes used to travel in all kinds of weather, and this was a furious lightning storm. Plane taxied out, taken off on time, off we go down the runway, thunder, lightning, plane takes off now. This was so long ago, I'm sitting in coach. And there's hardly anybody on the plane, five seats across in the back, and I'm seated right in the middle. And as the plane takes off, I'm trying to be really cool, and then, bam, there's a rifle shot, and the plane interior lights up like the inside of a light bulb. The next thing I knew, I was getting off the floor. My seat belt was around my neck. I crawled back up on the seat. I looked around. People are giving each other uh, CPR. And the pilot comes on and he says, well, ladies and gentlemen, you might have noticed a brief jolt back there. We were struck by lightning, nothing to worry about. I have three and a half million air miles. I've been struck by lightning five times. You might not want to fly with me. We went to New York on Amtrak. It's the only way to travel in the Northeast Corridor. I use Amtrak from Boston to Washington, every place in between. And the Acela, the high-speed train, is wonderful. And first class is just great. And so here we are traveling to New York, staying at the Peninsula Hotel. We get to New York. I show the uh, first class steward where our luggage is. He takes it off, gives it to a red cap. Red cap takes us out to a waiting limo. Limo takes it to the Peninsula Hotel. We get out. The doorman takes our luggage out, hands it to the bellman. The assistant manager greets us. We're escorted up to our room. I mean, this is just wonderful, right? They deliver our luggage within two minutes. I open the bag, not my luggage. Not my clothes, not my belongings. It's somebody else's baggage. So I told the bellman, you made a mistake downstairs. You switched things. He said, I don't think so, sir. We didn't do that. I called the hotel manager. They got security. They replayed the security tapes. And the security tape showed that the doorman took this bag out of the trunk of the limo and gave it to the bellman. And it's the same bag the bellman delivered, like a chain of evidence. I had pointed to the wrong bag on Amtrak. I took a professor's bag from Brown University who was to deliver a lecture in Washington and all the slides were in there. Somehow we got it fixed up. I told my wife she needs to pay more attention. I come back from Venezuela and I hit Miami. And there are about five 747s unloading. And my, I don't know if you've ever been through Miami immigration, but it's not pretty in the best of times. Well, these 747s disgorge and people are lined up out onto the runway. So a supervisor comes out, and the supervisor makes an intelligent decision, and he says to his immigration people, ask everybody just to hold up their passports next to their face and walk through the line. Don't stamp, don't check, just take a look to see if they're identical. And off we're marching, off we're marching, and the lines are moving, the lines are moving, and I get there, and of course the guy says, stop. Now at the time, the picture of my passport has a mustache. My hair is different, everything's different. The passport must be you know, near its expiration date. It's like bad milk. And the guy looks at the passport, looks at me, looks at the passport, looks at me, and he says, go ahead, it's close enough for government work. My wife and I were in Maine, uh, staying at a, a, a condo resort on the water. And my wife loves all babies and thinks all babies are wonderful. I like babies, but I don't think they're all wonderful. Some babies are better looking than others. My wife thinks every baby is great looking. A woman is approaching us, she must be 50 yards away, with a companion, and in her arms is a baby. And my wife said, oh, look, a baby. And I said, you know, that's an ugly baby. My wife said, it's not an ugly baby. I said, look how hairy it is. I mean, how old could it be? It's an ugly baby. My wife says, don't you say anything. This is a cute baby. And as they got close to us, the woman was carrying a monkey. She was training a monkey. I said to my wife, what do you think about the baby? One day, I had the great dog Trotsky, Koufax's predecessor in the Ferrari that I had at the time. And since Trotsky would jump out of this Ferrari with the top down after any hot dog stand or delicatessen, I had his leash tied to one of the inside handles. So Trotsky would sit in the passenger seat like this, and we stopped at a light. And next to us at the light, a pickup truck pulls up and stops. And Trotsky is eye level with the driver of the pickup. And Trotsky turns and looks at him, and the guy's looking at Trotsky. You're not supposed to stare at large dogs. And Trotsky's given him a look. And just before the light changed, the guy leans back and he catches my eye and he says to me, thank you. I said, for what? He said, now I can die happy. I've seen everything. Well, Koufax, get in the convertible. It's time for us to impress some people. Koufax, come on, Koufax. Let's go, Koufax. Come on, Koufax. Good boy.